Welcome to this lesson on exponent rules. An exponent is a number telling how many times to multiply a number by itself. The number being multiplied by itself is called the base. So this 2 is my base and the 3 is the exponent. And what this is telling me is to multiply 2 by itself three times. So 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. Exponent rules are rules that tell us how to operate with exponents. All right, so let's look at the first three below. The first rule is called the product rule. And that's when you have the same base multiplied and you have exponents with that base. So, for example, a to the n power times a to the n power. What you can do is add the exponents as long as the base is the same. So in this example, I have 2 to the third power times 2 to the fifth power. I can keep the same base and add those exponents, so 2 to the eighth power. The quotient rule is when you are dividing. So if I have the same base and I'm dividing, I can subtract the exponents. So here I have the same base. I can take those exponents, 4 minus 2, and subtract them, so 2. Now, if you want to go ahead and actually work these out, you can. So 3 squared, that's, of course, 9. 2 to the 8th power, I'm going to use my calculator here. That's 256. By the way, if you're using your calculator and you don't know how to type an exponent, you use the caret key. It looks like that to the 8th power, and that will give you your answer. All right, power rule. So this is when you have one base, and then you have an exponent times an exponent. And what you do is you just multiply those together. So this would give me 4 to the 6th power. 2 times 3 is 6. If you want to go ahead and actually work that out, 4 to the 6th power, that's at 4,096. All right, so let's try some examples here. And these have variables, but the exponent rules are the same. So number one, this is an example of the product rule. I have the same base, my base of y. So what I can do is add those exponents together, y to the sixth. And that's my final answer. I can't simplify that any further since it's a variable. I don't know what y is, so I'll leave it like that. Number two is a quotient rule example. So I have the same base of x. I'm going to subtract those exponents. So 6 minus 4, that's 2. So x squared is my final answer. And then number 3, that's a power rule example. So I have one base, and then I have the 7 on the outside of the parentheses. So I'm going to multiply those together. So 2 times 7, that's 14. Now, on the next few examples, you have coefficients in front of the variables. So what we're going to do with those is multiply them or divide them like normal. So for example, on the first one, I have 3 and then 2. And this, of course, is multiplied. So I'm just going to multiply those together first. 3 times 2 is 6. Those don't have exponents with them, so I'm not going to worry about the exponent rules yet. But now I'm going to look at that x to the third and x to the fourth power. So this is actually a product rule. Even though you don't see that multiplication symbol, we know that a parenthesis right beside another parenthesis means to multiply. So this is the same thing as this. So I can add those exponents using the product rule. So it would be x to the seventh power. Alright, on number five, the
The first thing I want to do is look at my coefficients. I have 4 over 2, which is the same thing as 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And then I'm going to look at my exponents with the variables. So I have y cubed over y to the first power. Even though you don't see an exponent, it's understood to be 1. And I'm going to use the quotient rule there, which tells me I can subtract 3 minus 1, which is 2. All right, and then number six, I have five x to the eighth power. And then on the outside of the parentheses, I have squared. Now this squared actually is going to apply to both the coefficient and the variable. So I'm gonna square five first, which is 25. And then I'm gonna use the power rule and multiply those exponents together. So x to the 16th power. All right, let's keep going. We have four more rules. So the next one is called power of a product. So here's my product, and we have a power. Power is just another word for talking about exponents, the power of two or the exponent of two, same thing. So when you have that, you can apply this exponent to both. And that is very similar Actually, exactly what we did on number six. We applied that exponent to both, that coefficient, but it also works for variables. So for my example, I can apply that exponent to both. It's almost like distributing. So two to the fifth times three to the fifth. And then you can simplify from there. Let's see, two to the fifth power is 32. 3 to the 5th power is 243. And then I'm going to multiply those together. And I get 7,776. All right. Power of a quotient rule. So we have a quotient here. We're dividing. And then we have a power. It says you can apply that exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. So here I can apply that squared to both the 1 and the 4. So 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16. So my answer would be 1 16th. The zero rule says anything to the zero power is 1. It may help if you write that out in words. Anything to the zero power is 1. So 6 to the zero power is 1 x to the zero power is 1. All right, and then the last one is the negative exponent rule. When you have a negative exponent, that means you are going to move it. So right now, this is a to the negative 2 over 1. I'm going to move that negative exponent to the denominator. And when I do, it's going to change to a positive exponent. And you can think a negative exponent, it's negative, it's not happy where it is, so I need to move it. So this 5 to the negative third power, it's not happy where it is, I need to move that down to the denominator. And when I do, when I move it, now it's happy, so it's positive. And then you can simplify that, 5 cubed, that's 125. So 1 over 125. All right, let's try some examples. So number one, that is a power of a product rule, which tells me I can apply that power to everything in the parentheses. So x to the eighth and y to the eighth. And that's my final answer. Number two, that's power of a quotient rule, which tells me I can apply that power to the numerator and the denominator. So x cubed over y cubed. Number three is the zero rule, which tells me anything to the zero power is one. Those are always easy, but also easy to forget. So don't forget, zero power is one. Not zero, one. And then number four is that negative exponent rule. It's x to the negative five power. It is not happy it's negative. So I need to move it and make it happy. So now it's positive. 
And remember, when you move it down to the denominator, you have to have something in the numerator, so that's why I put that one there. All right, let's try some with coefficients. So on number five, this is a power of a product, so that three applies to everything, even the three. So I have three cubed, x cubed, y cubed. And you always want to simplify coefficients all the way. So three cubed, that's three times three times three, that's 27. So don't leave an exponent with a coefficient. Go ahead and work it out. All right, number six, that's power of a quotient, which means this two applies to everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator. So two squared, x squared, y squared, over three squared, y squared. Now a couple of things. Let's go ahead and work out those coefficients. Two squared is four, three squared is nine. I'm gonna bring down my x squared. Now I have a y squared divided by a y squared. That is just like saying five over five. Something divided by itself is one. So it actually cancels out because anything times one is just itself. I don't need to write that one. So this is my final answer. All right, number seven is the zero rule. Anything to the zero power is one. Even if you have a long expression, it's still one. All right, and then number eight. So number eight, we actually have a couple of different rules going on. We have power of a product rule. So that tells me that this goes to everything. We also have the negative exponent rule, but let's apply that power rule first. So two to the negative third. This is going to be multiplied four times negative three is negative 12. And then three times negative three is negative nine. Now all of those are unhappy negative exponents. So I want to move them all to the denominator. And when I move them, they become happy and they're positive. And then the last thing I want to do is actually use that coefficient 2 to the third and work that out. 2 to the third power is 8. So I'm just going to erase here because I kind of ran out of room. And I'm going to change that to an 8. All right, you can go ahead and stop the video and complete your practice.